Bonjour everyone, Pentuf here today for a new video on Age of Dead Origins in which I'm gonna give you my top 5 best advice in order to grow the perfect way. The idea of this video simply came to me when I realized that I made a lot of mistakes as a new player. Obviously, as many others, when I joined my first alliance, I asked people about my growth, how I should do things, did I do any mistakes in the past, etc. And they really highlighted my mind and I really lost precious days, if not weeks, in order to get my grow perfect and obviously if you are a new player you are going to end up on a new server and if you want to be among the top players you need to follow those advices and without any other transitions let's talk about the first ever thing i can tell you do not focus at all on the different production types from your city do not get those buildings to level max because it's going to be totally useless at the beginning of the game, no problem. Usually an oil refinery, when you take a look at the details, will get the job done and you will have enough resources in order to grow. But past a certain point that is going to arrive pretty quickly, around level 10, you will not be able to sustain yourself just by producing your own resources. After all, this game is a PvP one, which means that they want to force you to go PvP. And the best way for that is to get an army to attack people and to grow by attacking people, but definitely not by producing yourself your resources. Number two advice, and for this one, you will have to get to the academy, is focusing on growth sciences. Number three, in order for you to be able to attack regularly your opponent and therefore having an army that can sustain itself, you need imperatively to get those medic station up to the max. Because this will allow you, instead of having troops that are killed and therefore lost forever, to get them as wounded. Which means that, for example, with my medic station at level 19, when I get attacked, if I have 10,000 troops out of them, only 500 are gonna die and 9.5k are going to be able to recover because I maxed them out. Number four, try to play all the events. Yes, it requires a lot of time because it means that you need to get active pretty much every day, but it's definitely going to be worth it, specifically if you're spending a little bit of money on the game on battle pass and stuff, but you don't necessarily need that because it will give you some extra bonuses that you can't allow yourself to pass on. For example, speed for sciences, speed for building, many resources like getting 50,000 food straight away like that etc etc and the really cool thing about those is that when you unlock them you do not have to use them which means that you can stack yourself a bunch of 50k bonuses for food and when you really need them you just use them all of a sudden all at the same time get the military or even the building you want to acquire straight away without fearing of getting attacked for the resources you stacked number five is being in an alliance and preferably the top alliance of your server for the simple reason that alliances in this game are quite important they will give you access to an alliance shop that is accessible totally for free you just need to participate into many different types of events that are uh, for alliances only or even by sharing some resources with others by doing that you will get some points called alley points that will get you in the shop some juicy stuff like the one we saw in the event. 50,000 food, maybe even 5 million food sometimes, and it's definitely a great helper. On top of that, being in an alliance will probably demotivate the opponents to attack you because they're going to think, okay, if I attack him, all the alliance is going to respond back and it's not worth it. Let's attack pretty much the smaller player that is not in an alliance and it will save your ass. Number six, and it's probably the most time consuming, but also the most efficient, try to get yourself at least two other accounts on the exact same server that you will use as paces. Basically, in this game, having only one city by yourself is not going to be enough to be competitive. If you really want to be among the top 10 players of your servers, you will have to create multiple accounts because they are all doing that. Which means that if you want to be effective, you need to make sure, uh, I didn't do it because I didn't know that at first, but make sure to have like uh, another city here and another here and another here. Because by doing so, you are going to be able to harvest many different resources from your other cities that will just get to the main one, your real account, the one with all the military 
that will obviously help your growth. And the last piece of advice I can give you, and this one is only counted as a bonus because it requires from you that you play with friends, but if you do, make sure to play with at least three other friends and make sure that each one of them is producing or specialized in producing only one type of resource. Because the great thing in this game is that when you take a look at the resources building here, they are not worth it if you are trying to harvest the four types of uh, resources. But if you focus only on one, and it's possible because you will just have to destroy the farms. Uh, let's take an example, it's going to be easier. I want to be the guy that produces oil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to destroy all single one of my farm, steel mill, etc, uh, etc. Et and instead of having those, I'm going to build oil refinery. Of course, it's going to increase my production by probably to 300% compared to other players. And if all of my other teammates are doing the exact same thing, we can support each other whenever we need the resources. For example, I'm producing only oil but i got severely attacked i need at least 1 million food i just send an sms or a mail or whatever to my friend telling him hey can you lend me like 1 million food as he's investing at least 10 million of this per hour he's gonna tell me yeah no problem and send everything straight away by doing that not only are you are you going to increase the solidarity between players you are also going to be able to grow way way better than many people that will get attacked and lose all of their resources at the same time and finally my last ever piece of advice make sure to watch your mails every day they're upgrading the day and to finish off, one last piece of advice that is, in my opinion, quite important. Make sure to look after your mails at least every day because they're uploading many, many things on this game. And usually when they do an update, it goes like for five minutes, 10 minutes, one hour, you can't log into the game. And they are always compensating players for that, which is great because it allows you to get many, many free stuff. For example, today we got a server update and just because I couldn't play the game for 15 minutes, I got myself healing speed one hour, speed up, recruitment speed up one hour, research speed up one hour, and building speed up one hour. So four hour in total less to wait for my troops my buildings and my science. In definitive, if you really follow those advices I just gave you, you should be able to do quite a lot of stuff. Obviously, it's not going to prevent you from getting attacked and things like that, because in order to be literally untouchable like many other games, you need to spend a little bit of money in order to get, you know, the famous dome of uh, an act an attackableness, I don't know how we say that, but basically a dome that allows you not to get attacked by any other players. But it's not really fun, let's be fair. It's a PvP game, you are here to fight, and why would you bother playing a PvP game if it's not to go for PvP, right? So yeah, follow those advices, tell me in the comments if it worked, and I'm gonna see you soon for a new video, probably talking about alliances a little bit more. See ya!